there, fellow fantasy football freaks. Yeah, I know. Kind of different. No fantasy armchair. Don't have to look at my ugly mug. Hey, this might be an improvement. I just wanted to make sure I could get out my top 10 waiver wire picks in a decent amount of time. That way you have the time to look it over before you put in your waiver wire claims. So without any further ado, here's my top 10 waiver wire picks for week 16. Number 10, Tua Tagovailoa. He's actually been usable in certain weeks. He's played well with or without Parker recently, and this week, the Dolphins play the Raiders, who are bottom 10 in defense against fantasy QBs, giving up 23.7 fantasy points per game to the position. I think he's good for that average this week, and if you've made it this far streaming QBs, and if you're in a deep league, pick up Tua, and good luck. Number 9, Cole Komet. The Bears have turned to Komet over Graham at tight end. He didn't do much this past week, but he has big game capability, especially in easier matchups like he has this week. The Jags are the third worst team at stopping imposing tight ends, so if you need a spot start a tight end in a game for all the marbles, pick him up. Number 8, Richard Higgins. Baker Mayfield is trying to prove that his play and production aren't outshined by his commercials, so he's been throwing to Higgins a lot more. Higgins has stepped it up as the number two guy since OBJ went down with an injury. This week he gets a crack at the Jets shitty SD, giving up 26 fantasy points per game to wide receiver squads. I see a good wide receiver two level week ahead for Higgins, so go snag him. Number 7, Mitch Trubisky. What did I tell you to do last week? Pick him up, wait a week, then start him in the championship match. Hopefully you'll listen. Because he only managed 14 points last week, but this week he gets the Jags, who are allowing 26.6 fantasy points per game. The second most fantasy points per game to QBs. All is going according to plan so far, so if you haven't picked him up yet, do it and start him in the big game. Bold move? Yeah. But remember, Fortis Fortuna Advent. Fortune favors the bold. So go get your fortune and go get Trubisky. Number 6, Antonio Brown. Hey, he scored a touchdown and had a great game last week. Final fucking Lee. We've been stashing this guy and waiting for him to bust out. And now that he has, it's time to bust him out onto your starting lineup. The time is now. This is what we've been waiting for. Sound the alarms. This is not a drill. And what better time than for the chip? So get him, set him, and forget him. Number 5, Austin Hooper. He hasn't been the model of consistency, no. But you don't have to be when going up against the Jets. They've been the worst team at defending the tight end position by far, like by two points over the number two worst, allowing over 12 points per game to tight ends. As Baker's been finding his mojo, he's been finding Hooper, so you should find Hooper on the waivers and go snatch him up. Number four, Baker Mayfield. Hey, speak of the devil. I've been singing this guy's praises throughout this segment, so I'll just say this. He's facing the Jets. End of analysis. I mean, come on, they're giving up nearly 27 points per game to QBs, and Baker's been on one recently. Need I say more? Get him now. Number three, Savan Ahmed. Just when we thought the Ahmed era was over, boom, he's back and better than ever, fucking up opponent's fantasy days like an RKO out of nowhere. Obviously, many owners gave up on him as he's only rostered in 35% of leagues currently. So chances are this solid RB2 is just sitting there on the waivers waiting for you to claim him. Which is good news for you because in this most crucial week, he gets the Raiders Swiss Cheese Run D. Classic pick up and start here. Do it. Number two, Tony Pollard. Is he better than Zeke? That's the dumbass question I've been hearing all week. Obviously, that's hyperbole. But if Zeke is out again, Pollard is worth a start. No, the Eagles aren't pushovers against the run. But Pollard has proven to be a matchup proof starter when given the rock early and often. And that's just what the Cowboys plan to do. Of course, if Zeke starts, that changes things. And if we get confirmation that Zeke's definitely out, that might move him up a little bit. So pick him up and start him if you have the room this week. And my number one waiver wire pickup of the week, Jalen Hurts. Yup, I'm all aboard this hype train. Woo woo! I told you all to pick him up. I told you he was going to kill it in the rushing game. And I told you this guy is the Eagles offense now. I said he was going to tear it up at the end of the season. And look what he did last week. He tore the roof off the motherfucker, throwing down a 30 burger for those brave enough to start him. And this week, the excitement grows to a fever pitch as he gets a feast in the Fantasy Point Fiesta of Dallas. Say goodbye to Carson's cavalcade of crap and say hello to the Hertz Locker. The pain trains are coming. Woo -hoo! Hop on board or get the fuck out of the way. That's it for my waiver wire picks, but here's some streaming defenses to check out this week. Arizona's trying to make something happen for the playoff push. <laughs> yeah, right. But this week, they do have a Niners squad, Sands, Mostert, and starting CJ Beathard at QB. So I'll take all the cards D you got this week, especially with how they've been playing recently. The Texans D hasn't been great, but this week, they get a Ryan Finley-led Bengals squad. 
Is there really much more I need to say? In a pinch, you could do worse. So rather than that, start the Texans. And finally, the Chargers get the Broncos at home so you know they're going to play hard. Unless Anthony Lynn decides last second to swap out the team for a pack of retired grandmas. <laughs> Knowing him, it could happen. But more likely, the Chargers will be in a tough rivalry game against the Broncos. With the Chargers D, who's been improving lately, likely mopping the floor with the prancing ponies of Denver. This move could help you reach the brass ring if you take advantage, so do it! So that's it for this abridged version of my Top 10 Waiver Wire Pick Show. Don't worry, I have a pretty epic episode planned for Thursday, Christmas Eve. I'm going to do my benches and bumps, ranks, all of that, plus the tirade and the shit list. So it's going to be a full episode, all right? Look forward to it. And I look forward to seeing you then, okay? So go get your waiver wire claims in. Good luck to you all. And until Thursday, I'm out. Peace.